This video is sponsored by Mindful Diabetes Inc. and their novel fundraiser. More on that later in the video. Welcome to Timeline Tapestry, where we weave together the past to uncover the stories that shaped our world. Today, we embark on a journey through time to explore the evolution of scientific thought, a journey from the ancient scrolls to the stars above. It all began in ancient civilizations, where the first seeds of scientific inquiry were sown. Philosophers, like Aristotle, pondered the mysteries of nature, setting the stage for centuries of discovery. Through the Middle Ages, amidst great turmoil, the flame of knowledge was kept alive by scholars all across the world. Their work paved the way for a renaissance of ideas. The Renaissance and the scientific revolution that followed marked a turning point. Bold thinkers challenged the status quo, unleashing a wave of discoveries that would redefine humanity's place in the universe. From the Enlightenment to the modern era, each discovery has built upon the last, pushing the boundaries of what we know. Today, we stand on the shoulders of these giants, looking out into a universe of endless possibilities. So join us as we unravel the threads of scientific evolution, tracing the paths from ancient wisdom to modern marvels. This is the story of how we came to understand our world. You're watching Timeline Tapestry. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and join us in exploring the rich tapestry of history. Part 1. Ancient Civilizations Our journey begins at the dawn of history in the fertile valleys that cradled ancient civilizations, where the earliest seeds of scientific thought were planted. In the land between two rivers, Mesopotamia, the Sumerians constructed towering ziggurats that reached towards the heavens, symbols of their desire to understand the celestial realms. It was here that writing was born, cuneiform pressed into clay, preserving observations of the moon and the stars that guided their agricultural seasons and inspired their mythology. Along the Nile, the Egyptians aligned their pyramids with incredible precision to the stars, their hieroglyphs whispering tales of gods who embodied the forces of nature, reflecting a cosmos intimately tied to their cultural identity. Mysterious artifacts like the Antikythera mechanism and the so-called Baghdad battery suggest that even in antiquity, Humanity's grasp of the natural world was more sophisticated than we once believed. But it was in ancient Greece that the spark of reason ignited a flame that would truly illuminate the world. Amidst all the marble and philosophy, thinkers truly began to question the myths of their ancestors. For example, in the bustling city of Miletus, Thales gazed skyward, not just in wonder, but in pursuit of understanding. A philosopher? Yes. But also an astronomer, Thales predicted a solar eclipse, an event that would cast both the world and human thought into shadow, however briefly. His prediction derived not from divine prophecy, but from a study of celestial patterns marked a significant moment in humanity's relationship with the cosmos. Anaximander, Thales' pupil, ventured further along this path. 
he was bold enough to challenge the mythological cosmology of his time, proposing an astonishing idea. The Earth floats unsupported in space. Imagine the audacity, the wonder, to conceive of our world hanging in the void without the cradle of a giant or the shell of a cosmic turtle to support it. His work laid the foundations of geography, mapping the world and divining the mechanics of the heavens. Anaximander's universe was boundless, infinite, and his ideas were a leap towards understanding the true nature of celestial bodies and our place among them. And the last philosopher from the school of Miletus that we'll talk about is Anaximenus, the student of Anaximander. Anaximenus postulated that air was the fundamental element of the universe and thus laid the groundwork for understanding transformation in the natural world. Anaximenus postulated that air could morph into other forms through rarefication and condensation. In his vision, condensation would compress air into wind, then clouds, water, earth, and ultimately stone. Conversely, rarefication would transform air into fire. Although he was incorrect, his cosmology painted a picture of the earth as a flat disk floating around on a vast expanse of air with the sun, the moon, and the rest of the celestial bodies as flat entities gliding around in the sky circling the earth. He believed that these bodies disappeared behind distant lands at night. While this was incorrect, it did spur further examinations of just how the celestial bodies work. The intellectual torch, kindled by the Milesians, was passed through the ages to three men whose thoughts would shape the Western philosophical and scientific landscape for centuries to come. Socrates of Athens seldom wrote down his own thoughts, yet his legacy of critical questioning would provoke a more profound examination of knowledge, virtue, and the natural world. His dialectical method encouraged a relentless pursuit of truth, laying the groundwork for a more systematic approach to understanding reality. Plato, Socrates' most famous student, founded the academy where mathematics, philosophy, and the sciences were studied with fervor. His allegory of the cave invited contemplation on the nature of reality, suggesting that our perceptions are but shadows of true forms, igniting debates on the principles that govern the natural world. In his dialogue, Timaeus, Plato explores the universe's creation, describing it as the work of a divine craftsman, arranging the cosmos with geometrical precision, providing an early model for the heavens' intricate order. Then comes Aristotle, Plato's most prominent protege, who broke from his teacher's ideal forms to root his inquiries firmly in the empirical world. Aristotle's extensive works spanned biology, physics, metaphysics, and beyond. His keen observations led to detailed classifications of plants and animals and speculation on the universe's workings. Aristotle expanded on the geocentric model, adding complex layers with his system of crystalline spheres. He strived not just to understand the universe's structure, but to unveil its purpose, seeking a teleological explanation for the cosmos and its contents. These philosophical giants took the ideas of their Milesian predecessors and soared, each adding a layer to humanity's understanding of nature. Socrates questioned the very essence of knowledge. Plato explored the universe's abstract architecture, and Aristotle cataloged the natural world, setting the stage for the scientific method. The wisdom of these men converged in the Library of Alexandria, the ancient world's beacon of knowledge, 
where their work inspired generations of scholars, including Ptolemy and Archimedes. Ptolemy most famously refined the geocentric model, and it stood unchallenged until a new age of inquiry dawned, proving that even the most deeply held beliefs are subject to the inexorable march of discovery. And let's not forget Archimedes, with his levers and pulleys. He was heavily influenced by Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, and he famously proclaimed, Give me a place to stand, and I shall move the earth. His inventions and mathematical treatises embody the timeless spirit of inquiry that defines science to this day. These ancient pioneers, with their astrolabes and scrolls, charts, and most importantly, curiosity, laid the first stones on the long road of scientific inquiry, a road that we continue to travel today as we unravel the mysteries of the universe. Part 2. The Middle Ages As we traverse the sands of time and continue our journey, we find the flame of knowledge not extinguished but burning brightly in the Islamic Golden Age. In the quiet corners of medieval Europe, monastic scribes dedicated their entire lives to the written word. Hunched over parchment in dimly lit scriptoriums, they preserved the wisdoms of antiquity, copying not only religious texts but also the scientific treatises of bygone civilizations. As these texts lay dormant in Europe's hands, a world away, the Islamic Golden Age was in full bloom. A cultural and scientific renaissance unfurled from Baghdad to Cordoba, a tapestry of knowledge weaving together threads from as far as China and the Indian subcontinent. Caravans and ships did not just carry spices and silks, but also carried ideas. The House of Wisdom in Baghdad stood as a crossroad of civilizations, where scholars translated works of Aristotle, Ptolemy, and even Archimedes into Arabic. Within the intellectual cauldron of the Islamic Golden Age, thinkers like Al-Hazan not only pondered the mysteries of light, but also dared to defy established doctrines with bold assertions and empirical evidence. For example, Al-Hazan's Book of Optics, Kitab al-Manazir, was a monumental work, challenging and ultimately transforming the understanding of vision. His methodical approach, testing hypotheses through experiments, was a forerunner to the modern scientific method. With ingeniously crafted lenses and cleverly designed experiments, Alhazan demonstrated how light travels in straight lines and how it refracts, dispersing into the colors of the rainbow when it passes through a prism. It's said that when faced with the impossible task of regulating the floods of the Nile, Alhazan feigned madness to avoid the caliph's punishment for his failure. This tale, perhaps apocryphal, captures the essence of a time when scientific inquiry could court great danger. Meanwhile, Al-Khwarizmi, another luminary of the era, was penning the pages of a book that would lay the foundation for algebra, a discipline vital to the evolution of science and technology today. Beyond algebra, Al-Khwarizmi's expertise extended to the stars above and the earth beneath. His work on astronomical tables allowed for more accurate predictions of celestial events, and his geographical treatises mapped the world with precision never before seen. His innovations in trigonometry charted the course for explorers to navigate the globe, leading to an era of discovery that would eventually connect the entire world. Continuing, in the heart of Al-Andalus, now known as Spain, the city of Cordoba became a lodestar of scholarship and dialogue. At a time when much of Europe lay in quiet slumber, Cordoba was a crucible of cultures 
where knowledge was the currency and power. The Great Mosque of Cordoba, a jewel of architectural splendor, was also a center for learning. Within its cool stone walls, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish scholars engaged in the translation movement, a pursuit that saw the wisdom of the ancients rendered into Arabic, Hebrew, and Latin. Averroes, known in the Islamic world as Ibn Rushid, was a polymath who embodied the spirit of Andalusian scholarship. A philosopher, a jurist, and a physician, his commentaries on Aristotle would later challenge and shape Western thought. His assertion that religion and philosophy could coexist harmoniously planted the seeds for secular thought. In the libraries of Cordoba, Averroes' bold ideas rippled through the intellectual pools of Europe, eventually informing the works of Thomas Aquinas and influencing the rise of secularism in the Renaissance. The school of translators in Toledo became a bridge between the Islamic and Christian worlds. Here, scholars like Gerard of Cremona and Michael Scott, not the guy from the office, translated scientific and philosophical works, unlocking a trove of knowledge that had been hidden for centuries. As these translations reached the rest of Europe, they dispelled the fog of ignorance, revealing a world where reason and discovery were to be celebrated. The so-called Dark Ages were in many places a period of intellectual vibrancy, preparing Europe for the luminous dawn of the Renaissance. Thus, the legacies of Islamic scholars, alongside the classical ancients, were enshrined in the annals of Renaissance Europe. In grand halls of knowledge, the insights of the Islamic Golden Age were studied, debated, and expanded upon, ushering in a new epoch where science and reason would reign supreme, a testament to humanity's enduring quest for enlightenment. Part 3. The Renaissance As the Renaissance dawned, the shackles of medieval thought were cast aside, and humanity's gaze turned skyward and inward, seeking truths in the mechanics of the heavens and the nature of existence. It was an age of splendor, an art and a crucible for innovation and science. Artisans and scholars, often one and the same, began to see the world with new eyes. The divine proportions in art mirrored the search for harmony in the cosmos. In the lush landscape of the Italian Renaissance, a mind of exceptional brilliance emerged, that of Leonardo da Vinci. Born in Vinci, his journey from a humble beginning to the courts of dukes and kings is a chronicle of insatiable curiosity and unparalleled creativity. In Florence, da Vinci was an apprentice under the tutelage of Verrocchio. Leonardo's early exposure to both art and mechanics would end up shaping his dual legacies. In this bustling workshop, he honed his craft, absorbing the interplay of light and shadow, the subtleties of expression, and the mechanics of nature. But Leonardo's ambition transcended the canvas. His fascination with the human body led him to the halls of hospitals and morgues, where his clandestine dissections unveiled the intricate choreography of muscle and bone beneath the skin. His notebooks, a kaleidoscope of art and science, reveal an intellect that saw no boundary between disciplines. Here, the sinews of a human arm paralleled the tension in a machine lever. The flow of water mirrored the curl of hair. His studies of the heart's chambers were not only works of art, but also feats of biological engineering, centuries ahead of their time. Leonardo's designs for flying machines with flapping wings inspired by birds reflect his dream of human flight. His sketches of tanks and submarines show a mind that conceived the future's warfare, while his plans for bridges and waterways demonstrate a profound understanding of architecture and hydraulics. Though 
Many of Leonardo's inventions remained unconstructed. His conceptual legacy is immense. His vision of a world where technology could harness the forces of nature anticipated the scientific revolution to come. In the realm of art, masterpieces like the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper continue to captivate. Their enigmatic subjects framed by Leonardo's mastery of technique and depth. They are enduring testaments to his quest to capture the essence of human experience. Leonardo da Vinci, a true universal genius, lived a life driven by an unyielding passion for discovery. In every stroke of his brush and each line of his quill, he sought to uncover the underlying order of the world. His legacy is a reminder that curiosity, when paired with skill, can chart the course of history and that the pursuit of knowledge is a canvas without end. Moving along, in the mid-15th century, a visionary named Johannes Gutenberg conceived a machine that would become one of humanity's most transformative inventions, the movable type printing press. In the German city of Mainz, Gutenberg's press began to churn out texts with unprecedented speed and uniformity. With this innovation, Gutenberg catapulted the dissemination of knowledge into a new era. Books, once painstakingly copied by hand and accessible only to the elite, could now be mass-produced. This democratization of knowledge broke the monopoly of monasteries and universities over learning, granting the broader populace access to a wealth of information. The ripple effect was immediate and far-reaching. The Reformation, spearheaded by figures like Martin Luther, was fueled by the widespread distribution of these printed materials. Political pamphlets, scientific treatises, and literary works found their way into the hands of an eager and increasingly literate public sowing the seeds of the Enlightenment. As the printed word was bridging communities and spreading ideas across Europe, a nobleman in Denmark was building bridges to the stars. Tycho Brahe, an astronomer of extraordinary precision, established his observatory on the island of Wien. His Fortress of the Stars, Uraniburg, became the nexus of astronomical observation. Equipped with instruments of his own design, Brahe cataloged the positions of celestial bodies with an accuracy that surpassed all predecessors. His data, scrupulously recorded over decades, captured the movements of planets and stars with unerring detail. Legend has it that the nose of Bra, made of gold and silver alloy after a youthful duel, was as distinctive as his astronomical legacy. His detailed observations were not only a testament to his dedication, but also to the remarkable advancements in observational technology during his lifetime. Bra's reluctance to fully accept the heliocentric model did not deter his assistant, Johannes Kepler, from recognizing the truth within the trove of data. Kepler's analytical mind, coupled with Bra's empirical treasure, gave birth to the three laws of planetary motion, laws that would chart the course for future giants like Sir Isaac Newton. The meticulous work of Bra and the revolutionary technology of Gutenberg together weaved a tapestry of knowledge that draped over Europe. In their own ways, each man pulled back the curtain on a universe far grander and more intricate than ever before conceived. They laid the tracks for the locomotive of progress that would thunder through the Renaissance and into the heart of the modern world today. Continuing our discussion, where the quest for knowledge is as boundless as the starry heavens, Galileo Galilei emerged as a pivotal force in the revolution of scientific thought. Born in Pisa, Galileo was a man whose name would become synonymous with the telescope and the celestial revelations it provided. His early days at the University of Pisa sowed the seeds of a mind that would not settle for a doctrine over demonstration. In the vibrant heart of Pisa, 
a city already famous for its leaning tower, a spectacle unfolded that would challenge the bedrock of medieval physics. Galileo ascended the tilting campanile with a purpose that would resonate through the annals of history. The prevailing wisdom, inherited from the revered philosopher Aristotle, claimed that heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones a doctrine accepted without question for nearly two millennia. But Galileo, armed with a keen mind that bound only to the weight of evidence, prepared to upend this ancient assumption. With the crowd gathered below, Galileo let go of two spheres of vastly different weights from the tower's top. According to Aristotelian physics, the heavier sphere should have struck the ground first. Yet, to the astonishment of onlookers, both spheres landed simultaneously. This simple but profound act demonstrated that the speed of falling objects was not dictated by their heft, as had been long believed, but rather by a different, more universal principle. Galileo's experiment was a call to observe and test, to measure and verify. His findings laid the groundwork for the concept of acceleration due to gravity. This discovery was not just about falling objects. It was a metaphor for the descent of unfounded doctrines and the rise of empirical science. Through his audacious defiance of classical thought, Galileo set in motion a tidal wave of scientific exploration. His work at the Leaning Tower was a cornerstone for his later, more comprehensive studies on motion, which would cement his legacy as a father of modern physics and a herald of the scientific revolution. But it was his gaze upon the heavens that would etch his name in the annals of history. With a telescope of his own making, Galileo saw beyond the veil of the night sky, revealing a universe far more complex and wondrous than ever imagined. He unveiled the moons of Jupiter, celestial bodies that danced around a planet other than our own, providing evidence that would bolster the Copernican heliocentric model and challenge the geocentric views of the cosmos. His advocacy for the heliocentric theory brought him into direct conflict with the church, leading to the infamous trial before the Roman Inquisition. Yet, even under the weight of persecution, Galileo's resolve remained unshaken, his belief in the supremacy of observed fact over inherited belief unwavering. In the silence of his house arrest, Galileo penned Two New Sciences, a work that laid the foundations for modern kinematics and strengths of materials. His legacy is not only in his discoveries, but also in his methodology, which heralded a new age where science would be guided by experimentation, observation, and mathematical rigor. The scientific revolution that unfolded from the Renaissance was built on the shoulders of giants like Galileo who dared to question, to prove, to teach, even in the face of adversity. His spirit of inquiry paved the way for those who followed as the quest for understanding continued to drive humanity forward into an enlightened future. Before we continue, we'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to today's sponsor, Mindful Diabetes Incorporated. Founded in 2023, this remarkable nonprofit is on a mission to make a difference at the intersection of type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. They believe in the power of small lifestyle changes for a longer, healthier life. Therefore, they are committed to funding holistic research that often goes overlooked their goal to showcase firsthand just how impactful these changes can be over time. And here's something special. They've partnered with the JSM Cooperative, a group of authors who have pledged 100% of the proceeds from their debut novel, The Man in the Ball Cap, to support Mindful Diabetes and their mission. The Man in the Ball Cap is a thrilling tale of private investigator Pepe Miguel's pursuit of an elusive serial killer, the Scallop Shell Slayer. Each purchase of this gripping novel contributes to a noble cause. So dive in to this captivating story 
and know that every page turned helps fund incredible research. Purchase a copy today and be a part of this meaningful journey. Thank you, Mindful Diabetes Incorporated, for your commitment to improving lives. Together, we can make a real difference. Part 4. The Enlightenment As the intellectual baton was passed from the Renaissance to the Enlightenment, a new pantheon of thinkers emerged, each contributing a verse to the grand poem of understanding. In the latter half of the 17th century, a figure emerged who would redefine our understanding of the natural world. Sir Isaac Newton, a Cambridge scholar, embarked on a journey of discovery that would unearth the fundamental laws governing the universe. Although Newton's early academic endeavors were interrupted by the Great Plague, this hiatus from formal education became a fertile period of private study. It was actually during this time, in the solitude of his family estate, that the foundations of his legendary theories began to coalesce. Newton's work was marked by an unparalleled rigor in experimentation and mathematical analysis. His experiments with prisms unraveled the nature of light, revealing that white light was composed of a spectrum of colors. This experiment alone would have secured his fame, but it was just the beginning. The tale of the apple may be apocryphal, but it serves as a metaphor for Newton's insight into the force of gravity. This force, which guides the fall of an apple, he realized was the same that governs the motion of the moon and the planets. The universal law of gravitation was a radical idea, positing that every object in the universe exerts a force upon every other over any distance. With the publication of Principia Mathematica, Newton laid down the three laws of motion that described the world as a grand, interconnected machine, a clockwork universe ticking with divine precision. These laws provided a framework that could predict the motion of celestial bodies and articulate the principles of conservation that underpin physics. Newton's quest to describe the motion of celestial bodies also led him to develop calculus, a new branch of mathematics focused on change in motion. Independently discovered by Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, calculus would become the language of engineers, economists, and scientists describing everything from the growth of populations to the orbits of spacecraft. Sir Isaac Newton's legacy extends beyond his monumental discoveries. His approach to scientific inquiry, rooted in observation, experimentation, and mathematical proof, established the standards by which all future science would be measured. He not only changed how we view the universe, but also changed how we seek to understand all phenomena in the natural world. As the mechanical universe of Newton's making ticked with precision, it was the philosophers and thinkers like Voltaire and Diderot who oiled its gears with the lubricant of reason and critique. Voltaire, the incisive wit of the Enlightenment, wielded his sharp quill against the injustices of his time. A prolific writer, his satires and plays skewered the established order while his philosophical letters sang praise of the English empiricism that Newton exemplified. Voltaire's advocacy for civil liberties and the separation of church and state echoed through the salons and coffee houses, igniting discussions that would reshape society. Denis Diderot, the architect of knowledge, embarked on an ambitious journey to condense human understanding into the pages of the encyclopedia. It was a Herculean effort to catalog the world's knowledge, from agriculture to zoology, from the arts all the way to the sciences. This compendium became the cornerstone of Enlightenment thought, a beacon for scholars and laymen alike illuminating the path to progress. The Encyclopedia, a monumental publication, became a weapon of enlightenment, compiling and disseminating human knowledge to challenge the old order. The Salons of Paris, hosted by intellectual powerhouses like Madame Joffrine, became forums where ideas, 
much like the wine, flowed freely. It was within these Salons' ornate walls that the air's brightest minds, like Voltaire and Diderot, sparred with the sharpness of their intellects. The Enlightenment's core values, reason, and puricism, and a challenge to authoritarianism, were debated, defended, and disseminated from these very rooms. The philosophers were not mere spectators, but active participants in the scientific revolution of their day. They grasped the implications of Newtonian physics, not just for the physical world, but for the metaphysical one as well, leveraging these new scientific insights to argue for political and social reform. Among these intellectual titans, Madame du Châtelet stood tall. Her translation and interpretation of Newton's Principia made the complex laws of physics accessible to the French intellects and, crucially, led credence to the idea that women could contribute significantly to the scientific discourse. Caroline Herschel's forays into the night sky were not merely acts of curiosity, but monumental strides in a male-dominated field of astronomy. Herschel, with her comet discoveries, did more than extend the celestial catalog. She redefined the role of women in the scientific community. Each comet she traced through the cosmos illuminated the path for future generations of women in science. Her meticulous observations earned her recognition by the Royal Astronomical Society, and her legacy endures in the craters named for her on the moon and the asteroid Urschel a permanent testament to her contributions in the celestial sphere. On the rugged shores of Lyme Regis, another woman, Mary Anning, made discoveries that would echo through the halls of paleontology. With her keen eye and tenacious spirit, Anning uncovered fossils that painted a picture of a world long gone. Her findings of ichthysaurs, pleosaurs, and other prehistoric creatures provided a glimpse into Earth's evolutionary past, challenging existing notions of natural history. Anning's legacy went beyond her fossil shop. Her discoveries laid the groundwork for the theory of evolution, influencing none other than Charles Darwin himself. The impact of her work rippled outward, igniting a scientific revolution that would reshape our understanding of life on Earth. The Enlightenment was an age of transformation where the quill and the lens, the canvas and the printing press, each played their part in shaping a new world view. As scientific societies and journals proliferated, so too did the idea that through observation and reason, humanity can unlock the mysteries of the universe. As the century waned, the Enlightenment had irrevocably changed the landscape of human thought. The scientific method, championed by these great minds, became the gold standard of inquiry, setting humanity on a path towards the Industrial Revolution and the modern world. Public lectures, once the domain of scholars, now drew crowds in the thousands, a testament to an era that revered science as the noblest pursuit of the human mind. Part 5. 19th and 20th Century Advancements As the 19th century unfolded, it beckoned a transformation of thought and society. The engines of the Industrial Revolution powered a new world, but amidst this mechanical ballet, a voyage of discovery was charting a different kind of revolution, one that would traverse the farthest reaches of understanding and the very fabric of life. Charles Darwin, a man of contemplative nature and meticulous character, embarked on a journey aboard the HMS Beagle that would become one of the most significant voyages in scientific history. A young Darwin, initially setting out to map the coastlines, found himself mapping the contours of biological diversity instead. It was on the isolated shores of the Galapagos Islands that Darwin's keen observational skills took flight. The peculiar finches, each with 
beaks perfectly crafted as if by an artisan's hand to suit their diet and habitat, whispered to him the secrets of adaptation and survival. Darwin's meticulous notes and sketches captured an astonishing array of life forms, each uniquely suited to their environment. From the giant tortoises to the marine iguanas, Darwin saw a pattern emerge, a pattern suggesting that species were not static, but fluid, sculpted by the unseen hand of nature's selection. Upon his return to England, Darwin grappled with the implications of his findings. The concept of species transmutation was controversial, challenging entrenched beliefs. Yet, the weight of evidence he had gathered was undeniable. Over two decades, Darwin refined his theory, understanding that it was the environment that selected the traits most suited to survival, a process he called natural selection. In 1859, when Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species finally emerged on the scene, it was received with a cacophony of discourse that would reverberate through the ages. Darwin's masterwork was a call to the curious and the scholarly alike, a meticulously argued case for the process that he called natural selection. Academics, clergy, and lay people alike found themselves embroiled in fervent discussions, some entrenched in the opposition, others buoyed by the prospects of a new understanding of life. The book's ripple effect was immense. Across oceans and continents, on the origin of species, cross borders and ideologies, sparking conversations and controversies that transcended the scientific community and entered the broader cultural zeitgeist. As the decades passed, Darwin's once controversial ideas gained traction, bolstered by an ever-growing body of evidence. From the fossil record to the genetic tapestry unveiled by modern science, each new discovery has served to reinforce the tenets of Darwinian evolution, offering clarity to the once blurry lines of our biological heritage. Even in the contemporary era, Darwin's legacy is not merely historical. It is the bedrock upon which the modern synthesis of evolutionary biology is built. His insights have spurred advancements in the diverse disciplines, shaping our understanding of the very mechanisms that drive the diversity and adaptability of life on Earth. So, as the 19th century gave way to the 20th, the landscape of science was irrevocably altered by the intellect and determination of a remarkable woman, Marie Curie a physicist and chemist of extraordinary talent, embarked on a scientific odyssey that would unveil the enigmatic properties of radioactivity. Marie Sklodowska Curie, a migrant from Poland to France, rose through the ranks of academia with a fierce intellect and unwavering resolve. At the Sorbonne, she met Pierre Curie, a man of science whose heart beat in rhythm with her own passion for discovery. Together, they began a partnership in life and research that would alter the course of human history. In a makeshift laboratory that barely kept the Parisian chill at bay, the Curies embarked on painstaking research. Handling pitch blend and ore rich in uranium, they deduced the presence of elements that were, at the time, beyond the reach of human perception elements that emitted powerful, penetrating rays. With tireless hands and a vigilant eye, Marie Curie purified the substances that she and Pierre had identified. The isolation of radium and polonium was a triumph of chemistry and physics, the significance of which resonated beyond their small lab. For her achievements, Marie Curie was honored with Nobel Prizes in both physics and chemistry, a feat unprecedented and unequal to this day. But the scope of Curie's impact was not confined to the accolades she garnered. The discovery of radioactivity opened a Pandora's box of possibilities. The medical field was revolutionized as radium began to play a crucial role in the treatment of cancer, offering hope where despair had reigned for so long. Her legacy is enshrined, not just in the elements she discovered, 
or the prizes she was awarded, but also in the past she blazed for the women in science and the standards she set for scientific rigor. Her life's work continues to radiate inspiration as the principles she helped uncover now drive technologies that power our cities, diagnose our ailments, and still push the very boundaries of science itself today. In the wake of Marie Curie's luminous discoveries, the stage was set for another prodigious leap in our understanding of the universe. The baton of innovation passed from Marie Curie's radium-lit laboratory to a modest desk in Bern, where a young patent clerk contemplated the very essence of reality. After all, it was a time of great upheaval and progress. The world was rapidly transforming, and with it, the frontiers of human knowledge. The ripples from Curie's work with radioactivity were still spreading when Albert Einstein began to unveil the depths of time and space. Just as Marie Curie had peered into the atom and found a new kind of energy, Albert Einstein looked at the motion of light and saw a universe more strange and wonderful than anyone had imagined. His theories would not only complement the new atomic age, but also redefine the cosmos. Einstein's miraculous year of 1905 brought forth ideas that would forever change the course of physics. He saw light as a particle and a wave, motion as relative, and energy and mass as interchangeable. His special theory of relativity introduced a universe where time could stretch and contract, where the very geometry of space could bend. Einstein's genius lay in his ability to conceptualize the unfathomable through simple thought experiments. Imagining riding on a beam of light or falling in a gravitational field, these mental forays were not mere flights of fancy. They were the scaffolding of his general theory of relativity, a theory that would stand as a testament to his name. The true test of Einstein's bold vision came with the bending of starlight during a solar eclipse, a phenomenon that confirmed his predictions and catapulted him into the annals of scientific legend. His ascent marked a new era, one where the abstract language of mathematics could unveil the intimate workings of the cosmos. But Einstein's impact was not confined to the blackboards of academia. His pacifist stance during the tumultuous times of World War I his role in the atomic age, and his later years as a champion for civil rights showed a man deeply engaged with the moral implications of science. As we reflect on the legacies of giants like Marie Curie and Albert Einstein, we see a tapestry of interconnected ideas, each contributing to the warp and weft of a progress. Einstein's legacy, much like Curie's, endures in the technologies that define our modern era and in the ongoing quest to understand the universe, an odyssey that began with the simplest of questions and led to the most profound of truths. In the shadow of Einstein's monumental contributions to theoretical physics, the stage was set for another intellectual titan whose work would launch humanity into the digital age. Alan Turing, a mathematician and logician, would come to be known as the father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence. Turing's story began in the realm of pure mathematics and logic. His seminal 1936 paper on computable numbers introduced the concept of a universal machine capable of performing any conceivable mathematic computation, a foundation for the modern computer. During the dark days of World War II, Turing's genius was turned to the task of deciphering the seemingly unbreakable codes of the Enigma machine. His success in this endeavor at Bletchley Park was a pivotal moment in the war and a monumental achievement in the field of cryptography. In the piece that followed, Turing turned his attention to the development of computing machines, laying out the principles of what would become the digital computer. He foresaw a world where machines would not only calculate, but could potentially mimic workings of the human mind. Turing's work set in motion a technological revolution that would culminate in the digital devices that are now integral to our daily lives. From the smartphones in our pockets 
to the global network of the internet, the seeds turning planted have grown into a forest of digital innovation. Yet Turing's legacy is bittersweet. Despite his profound contributions, he faced personal tribulations and was never fully recognized during his lifetime. Today, we honor him not only as a pioneer of computer science, but as a visionary who shaped the modern world, reminding us that the power of abstract thought can transform society in concrete ways. As the theoretical underpinnings of computation were being laid by Turing, another revolution, quieter but no less profound, was unfolding in the realm of biology. Rosalind Franklin, a gifted x-ray crystallographer, would make a discovery that unveiled the very blueprint of life. Franklin's meticulous x-ray diffraction images provided the first clear evidence of the DNA double helix structure. Her famous photograph 51, revealing the helical form of DNA, became one of the 20th century's most significant scientific findings. Though Franklin's contributions were initially overlooked in favor of her male contemporaries, her work was instrumental for Watson and Crick's model of DNA. Her images and insights were key to understanding how genetic information is stored and replicated, changing the course of science and medicine. The elucidation of DNA structure opened the floodgates to a new era in biological sciences. It paved the way for the Human Genome Project, genetic engineering, and advances in biotechnology that have reshaped our health, agriculture, and legal systems. Today, we recognize Rosalind Franklin's steadfast dedication to science and her crucial role in one of the greatest scientific discoveries. Her legacy lives on in the continued exploration of genetics, a field that holds the keys to understanding not just human health and heredity, but also the complexity of all life on Earth. As the helical structure of DNA began to unravel the mysteries of life, the cosmos too yielded its secrets to the keen observations of a remarkable astrophysicist, Vera Rubin. Her work would bring to light the elusive substance that binds the stars, dark matter. Vera Rubin, with a telescope as her scalpel and the night sky as her canvas, probed the rotations of galaxies. Her meticulous observations revealed that the stars at the edges of galaxies were moving much faster than predicted by the visible mass alone. The rotation curves, which should have shown stars at the outer edges moving slower than those near the galactic center, defied expectations. Rubin's analysis suggested that some unseen mass, dark matter, exerted gravitational pull, influencing the motion of stars at the outer edge. Rubin's pioneering work provided compelling evidence for the existence of dark matter, transforming our understanding of the universe's composition. Her findings sparked a paradigm shift in cosmology, affecting theories of how galaxies form and evolve over time. While the concept of dark matter was initially met with skepticism, Rubin's steadfast evidence gradually won the scientific community over. Today, her legacy is not just in the stars she studied, but in the paths she cleared for future generations of scientists, particularly women in fields where they had long been underrepresented. The quest to understand dark matter continues, a challenge to which the brightest minds in physics and astronomy now arise. Vera Rubin's contributions stand as beacons illuminating the vast, dark oceans of the cosmos and reminding us that what we see is but a fraction of the grand tapestry of the universe. In the latter half of the 20th century, as astronomers like Vera Rubin were unveiling the hidden mass of the cosmos, another towering intellect emerged to challenge our understanding of the most enigmatic object in the universe, black holes. Stephen Hawking, a theoretical physicist and cosmologist, grappled with the fundamental laws governing the universe. Confined to a wheelchair by a motor neuron disease, Hawking's mind soared free, probing the depths of general relativity and quantum mechanics. 
Hawking's pioneering work suggested that black holes were not the eternal prisons they were once thought to be, but could emit radiation and potentially evaporate over eons. This theoretical discovery, now known as Hawking radiation, bridged two pillars of modern physics, the vastness of general relativity and the subatomic peculiarities of quantum theory. Beyond the realm of academic physics, Hawking became a cultural icon, a symbol of human determination and the power of the intellect. His best-selling book, A Brief History of Time, brought complex concepts in cosmology to the masses, sparking widespread interest in the origins and the fate of the universe. Hawking's legacy extends well beyond theoretical predictions. He changed the way we think about the universe. His contributions continue to fuel discussions in theoretical physics and cosmology, while his life story inspires all those who marvel at the cosmos and strive to unlock its secrets. As we continue to gaze into the night sky, the work of scientists like Vera Rubin and Stephen Hawking reminds us that our quest to understand the universe is filled with questions that stretch the limits of our imagination. They remind us that in the vast darkness of space, there are glimmers of light, insights into the nature of everything that exists. As the curtain draws on the 20th century, we encounter a mind whose work intertwines the physics of the cosmos with the enigma of consciousness. Sir Roger Penrose, a mathematician and physicist, Penrose has ventured where few have dared, into the abstract realms where the physical meets the mental. Penrose, building upon the legacies of those before him, including his collaborator Stephen Hawking, delved deep into the geometry of space-time. His seminal work in the 1960s on the singularity theorems provided mathematical proof of the reality of black holes, a concept that had seemed more science fiction than science fact. Yet, Penrose's curiosity was not confined to the vastness of space. He cast his gaze inward on the human mind itself. He posited that consciousness arises from quantum phenomena within the brain, a hypothesis that marries the worlds of quantum physics and neuroscience in a bold new synthesis. His theories, though unproven, challenge us to consider the possibility that the universe is not only a tapestry of matter and energy, but also of consciousness. Penrose's work suggests that understanding the universe might be inseparable from understanding ourselves. As we reflect on the journey through the ages, from Darwin to Curie, from Einstein to Rubin, and now to Penrose, we see a lineage of intellectual bravery and exploration. Penrose's explorations into the deep connection between the physics of the universe and the workings of the mind underscore the profound unity of all inquiry. So we stand at the frontier of knowledge, where the mysteries of black holes, the origins of the universe, and the enigma of consciousness beckon us forward. What wonders await us may only be limited by the scope of our questions and the breadth of our imagination. And so, we come to the end of our journey through the timeline tapestry of scientific thought, a narrative woven with the threads of curiosity, discovery, and the unending quest for understanding. We thank you, dear viewer, for embarking on this voyage with us. From the ancient libraries of Alexandria to the minds of modern day visionaries, we've traversed the epochs, witnessing the evolution of human knowledge. This is the legacy we carry forward, a legacy not of answers, but of questions, not of conclusions, but of curiosity. It is a journey we all share woven into the timeline tapestry of science and discovery. It's a testament to the power of human inquiry, the willingness to question, to explore, and to imagine. We've marveled at the brilliance of minds that shaped the world and the revelations that transformed our existence. 
So as we conclude, we invite you to continue your own exploration. The timeline of science is not static. It's alive with new questions waiting to be asked, new mysteries yearning to be unraveled. Whether you're a seasoned scientist or a curious thinker, the timeline tapestry of scientific thought belongs to us all. It's an ever-evolving narrative, and your voice can add new chapters to this epic story. Thank you for joining us on this odyssey through time and ideas. We hope it sparks your own journey of exploration and ignites the flames of curiosity within you. Careful not to break your finger smashing that like button, and just for good measure, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications so you stay notified when we upload our videos. And for any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until we meet again in the endless expanse of knowledge, stay curious, stay inspired, and keep weaving your own thread into the magnificent timeline tapestry of science. Farewell, and may your quest for knowledge be as boundless as the universe itself.